there. Welcome to Disney Deep Dive, where each week we dive into the history and story of the Disney parks. I'm Leah. And I am Stefan. And today we come a searching for adventure and salty old pirates and a surprisingly popular movie franchise. Uh, you guessed it. We're talking about the Pirates of the Caribbean. Yes. Uh, so this is one of probably the one of the oldest rides in Disneyland in any Disney park, really. Yes. Uh, what is your personal relationship with this ride so yeah so it was funny when we decided to do this we sat down and we just talked we're like well let's just talk about our first experience riding the ride or with the ride itself whatever that might be so for me this is taking it back to the 90s it was before the pirates of the caribbean movies had come out and i was a kid and i went to disney for the first time and i remember being very excited to ride the ride because I hadn't seen that movie because it didn't exist yet, but I had seen Muppet Treasure Island, which was a new movie at the time. Um, I think that came out mid nineties, like 95, 96, yeah, somewhere sure. in there. Yeah. So I remember loving that movie. And then we went to Disney. It was myself, my younger brother and my parents. And um, I remember the ride because it was one that we all liked. It wasn't like, oh, we're going to do this for Leah or oh, we're going to do this for dad. It was one that we all really liked. And we wrote it multiple times. Um, and yeah, so we were really excited about it then. So that was encounter number one with Pirates of the Caribbean. And then in high school, would have, yes, I would have been in high school when the first movie came out and everyone was talking about it. It was such a big deal at the time. Even if you weren't super into Disney, people were so excited about that movie. And so then I went back shortly after that came out. So that was really exciting as well. They hadn't changed things over to being about the movie or any parts of the movie, but that was cool because the movie had come out. And then just recently, this is kind of funny, but I do unboxings and things like that on this channel. And I was sent this book, which is The Pirates of the Caribbean, Dead Man Tell No Tales, The Brightest Star in the North. And it's about Karina Smith. So it's Karina Smith's origin story if you saw the most recent Pirates movie. And I got this, I think last summer. And I'm not a reader, you guys. I. I used to be, um, but now I'm all about Audible and podcasts and YouTube videos, and I'm more into things that are like self-help, personal care, nonfiction. I just don't take the time to read, and we've got three young kids, and we're busy. But I've been trying to make a point to have some me time, so I actually picked this up less than a month ago, a few weeks ago, and read a couple pages, and then I finished it. So it's a really good book. So that's my most recent thing. But what about you? Well, uh, first of all, if you guys, uh, we're, we're using a new streaming platform, like going live platform. So if someone wants to comment, so we know that we're looking at the comments yes. in the right spot, go for it. Yes. If we don't respond, it's because we don't see them. So yeah. give us some feedback, but we'll tinker around with it. It We're going to do the show each week. So yeah, but uh, so my experience, um, yeah, I did go to the parks. Oh, I've only been to Walt Disney World. Yeah, and yeah for I, both of us. That's it's yeah, worth noting. Yeah. I did ride uh, the Pirates of the Caribbean both times I was there when I was younger. Uh, the ride left no impression on me whatsoever. Uh, oh, there we go. Latasha's on. Hello. Hi, LJ. Um, <laughs> I did ride the ride and don't remember. I, well, I remember now, but I didn't remember anything about it then. So um, to give you the really the background of my personal relationship with it, let me set the scene here. Uh, the year is 2003. A young Stefan is walking down the street. Skip in his step, dream in his pocket, whistle in a tune, <laughs> when suddenly the marquee of a movie theater catches his eye, and he thinks to himself, maybe I'll go see that new Pirates movie. And he walks in, gets a ticket, popcorn, soda, sits down, watches the movie, and his mind is blown. Uh, and much like everything did to me back then, or the way I approached everything back then uh, in my nerdy way, um, I got really obsessed with pirates for a short time and thought it was amazing. So immediately went home and got online and bought the highest rated book I could find, like Pirate History. Um, opened it up, read about 20 pages, closed it, threw it in my closet, never read it again. Because I found out really quickly that actual pirates are scary criminals and aren't exciting at all. Um, it's just lives of boring crime in the, like... 17 and 1800s yeah, just bad people just, just bad, bad guys people. yeah and nothing i wanted to read about uh which begs the question how did we get a ride about this in uh, the land known for princesses and cartoons and castles 
Yeah. So, and today we should wanted to say too that this is Disneyland's birthday. Disneyland is oh, right, 64 yeah. years birthday, old today. So, happy birthday, Disneyland. 64, you're looking good. Um, so, in 1961, that is when the story all started for Pirates of the Caribbean. So, I'm reading off my notes here so I don't mess it up. But Walt Disney tasks Mark Davis, who a lot of you, if you're really big Disney buffs, you definitely know that name, with researching and designing the new attraction, which was the first concepts. It's going to be a pirate themed attraction. And then it was going to accompany the opening of New Orleans Square in Disneyland. Right. So Walt was really into this idea of a, a pirate themed thing. Mm -hmm. uh, they didn't have the whole thing nailed down yet, but a pirate themed idea in the New Orleans area. You know, he was thinking like, okay, New Orleans, you've got obviously uh, the, the music scene and the food, but then you've also got pirates and the stories of pirates in the area. So he wanted some sort of pirate themed attraction. So yeah. Mark Davis gets a working. And uh, if you don't know who he is, he's a Disney legend. And get used to us saying Disney legend in this also because this story's chock full of them. It's... Yeah, well, the, this attraction has so many of just yeah. the like the, the nine old men, but also just people who really were legends in the Disney. But they, especially these early rides, they had a lot to do with that and the movies as well. Yeah, exactly. So if you don't know Mark Davis, he worked originally on movies like uh, Snow White, Bambi, Cinderella, um, many of the early D Disney classics, um, doing a lot of character work. So he did all of the early character designs for the ride. So he, uh, he had no real starting point other than pirates. That was it. That's the direction he was given. So he starts researching pirates. And originally, Mark's idea was, okay, I'll just base this on historical pirates, uh, people who actually existed, and I'll kind of work off of that, and it'll be sort of a, a edutainment sort of attraction. Mm -hmm. um, very quickly, he learns, <laughs> as much as I did, that <laughs> pirates are just scary criminals. It's not going to be a fun, not... family-friendly ride, yeah. <laughs> and they do not deserve our <laughs> praise or uh, 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 attention. So immediately switches gears and says, okay, I, I need to make this more fun. People do not want scary criminal pirates. So he creates these fun, brightly colored pirate-like characters to fill the space of the actual pirates that he originally had designed for the attraction. Yeah, and so what's really cool I noted is that if you go to Disneyland and you're in the queue, the art, some of his first concept art is actually in the queue. So as you're going through the line to ride pirates at Disneyland or Pirates of the Caribbean at Disneyland, you can see some of that original concept art, which I think is really fun. Mm -hmm. And so it's not anywhere else either. Yeah. It is just in that one queue. So you can still see it there. You can mm -hmm. find it online too if you're really interested. You can look it up. Yes. So the original concept for the ride wasn't a ride at all. <laughs> it, it was this, they originally thought, okay, we'll put it in the basement of New Orleans Square. There'll be this big space and it will be a walkthrough wax museum. Think of like a more immersive Madame Tussauds. Yeah, like a, like the wax museum. Yeah, and, yes. yeah, exactly. Yep. Yeah, and I, I think that it's also, it, we were talking about it and it's interesting because it sounds so crazy now, pirates not being a ride or just an attraction like that. If you heard about it, oh, there's going to be a pirate attraction, you would expect a ride. You'd expect a, expect a situation where you're going to get on a boat or a ship or whatever it is and be pushed through the ride or the attraction. But back then, this is just as Disneyland was opening. There really weren't theme parks to this caliber, or this standard at the time. So they didn't know what they were doing. And it wouldn't have been... Um, expected because there wasn't that expectation and that precedent already set so yeah exactly there wasn't like it was any time an attraction opens now we think oh, okay well it's going to be a ride of some sort mm -hmm. or or if it isn't then it's it's specified early on that it won't be uh so back then it was like oh it'll just be a thing we don't know what it is it, it'll be something uh things are a little more uh procedural these days yes. um so they started uh, they broke ground on the basement in orland square they start working on the area for the ride um, Mark Davis continues, you know, making his drawings and whatnot. Then everything stops in 1963, actually, because the 1964 uh, New York World's Fair was coming up, and Disney had been tasked to build uh, four four attractions for uh, businesses uh, who want to present things. Yeah, like at the World's huge fair. undertaking attractions too. No, no little, no yeah. little projects here. And, and, and nothing you don't know. Uh, the things they built were uh, it's a small world. 
uh, the Abraham Lincoln audio animatronic, the Carousel of Progress, and the Magic Skyway. Mm -hmm. uh, so all things that we know and love and are familiar with. So uh, this is how those things came about, actually. It's, it's sort of the origin of those attractions as well. Um, but they, he needed all hands on deck for that. So all Imagineers ripped off of Pirates of the Caribbean. It wasn't even Pirates of the Caribbean yet. Ripped off of the Pirates attraction, mm -hmm. New Orleans Square, and put onto these projects. So they worked on these. Now, they were all a huge success. Um, this in and of itself is a story that we can't get into a whole lot. But what we can say is that they were all very popular. And they came back with a lot of ideas and a lot of drive to do more with what they were trying to build. Mm -hmm. uh, this results in Walt saying, okay, well, we have a robot Abraham Lincoln that yeah. looks super real and blows people's minds. We can't have wax figure pirates now because that would be ridiculous. Yeah. Well, it was essentially going to be outdated. By the time they would build it and go through it, mm -hmm. it would. he knew, he had the foresight to be like, wait a second, this will be outdated. By the time we go through and do it, we need something better. Yeah, even if they did build it, they would have to update it immediately. Right, so, right. So he says, okay, well, scrap it. Whatever, we, we started building it. It doesn't matter. Let's move forward and uh, do something bigger and better. Mm -hmm. Now, a little note here. Some people I've heard say that this was a huge risk like because they'd already started working on this project. So some people like to say, oh, this was a giant risk. They didn't know if it was going to work, you know, blah, blah, blah. Um, and they also like to say, oh, it's a testament to Walt, you know, his, his, I don't know, caliber of a dreamer and like how he, he looked at things. But I mean, I, I don't really buy into that as much. I mean, it's, it's fun to think about, but more or less it was just, uh, his good business sense. Yeah. We're on the same page here. We both, I, I mean, I definitely think a dreamer, but a dreamer and a businessman. I mean, Walt was yeah. a businessman and he had the forethought and there's no, there's no shame in that. Right. Like, I mean, he thought, wait a second, if I can make. Like, I can make this, make the money back and back and back. Exactly. It's so, a no-brainer. Like, he was just, he was a good businessman. Mm -hmm. And I mean, and the, a dreamer. yeah, well, and a dreamer, but the Enchanted Tiki Room had opened the year before. That was a huge hit. People loved it. And all mm -hmm. you had were, you know, some basic effects. Now they have this whole range of things they can do. He knew that any money they lost in the initial construction, they were going to make back like tenfold. Right. So, um, not, not to like dash anyone's dreams here or anything, but I think that just is more of a testament to what a great businessman he was, uh, more than, um, he's willing to take a chance. Mm -hmm. Um, so they get back, they start working on this new concept. Um, they still hadn't ironed everything out. Uh, they did know that rather than a walkthrough, uh, sort of, uh, attraction, they wanted it to be a ride. Uh, the main reason for this is with a ride you can get way more people through no yeah people no, can't just hang around <laughs> there, there's no one walking through yeah dawdling in front of you know whatever attraction they, they yeah. is most popular you know you get people in they move in they get out and even though boats like thematically make total sense because it's a pirate ride um, the real reason they went with boats is because it's just the easiest way to move people through a thing. Yeah. There's no mechanical thing that can go wrong. Nothing can break down, really. Easier to get people on and off as well. There are some rides. I think of um, Peter Pan. Mm -hmm. And that, if you are familiar, but it's little ships. You're going through Neverland. And that is a slow loading ride. And things like Pirates or Small World or other ones where it's a boat bench kind of situation... It's easier to load people safely, fast, get them in and out. Yeah, exactly. Now, numbers-wise, uh, pirates can get about 3,400 guests through a queue in one hour. Which is huge. That's, that's a lot. It, by comparison, if you look at uh, Space Mountain, uh, they, they can do like 1,000. So it, it moves a ton of people through very, very quickly. Um, which is what they were going for because they knew this was going to be big. They, they were going to promote it that way. They were going to advertise it that way. They knew it was going to be a big popular thing that people were going to want to come see and they wanted to get as many people through it as possible. Uh, so this is where they came upon their first challenge with the ride. Uh, and that was getting people through the basement because as you remember, we mentioned earlier, the original concept was to have a attraction in the basement of New Orleans Square. So that was still there. The basement was still there. They dug the basement. This is where the ride was going to start. Um, and they had to get people through it somehow. They didn't have a ton of space to work with. Right. 
So what they ended up coming up with is, well, first, when you enter, there's that waterfall drop. Well, that drop is just taking you down into the basement. Um, and they had to have some sort of show. They knew, like, well, we can't just have walls or, like, darkness for however long this section is. So they Disney had gone, uh, Walt Disney had gone to uh, Carlsbad Caverns quite a bit. He loved going there. There's a lot of stories about him visiting and like staying the night in yeah, the caverns you can, even. You can look it up, but it was a thing that he really liked to do. So it made sense for this. But if you if you just Google it, you'll be able to see what we're talking about. Um, right. So I, I and I don't know if the idea came directly from him or if someone said, well, why don't we have him go through an underground cavern? And then he threw in the idea of, well, you know, make it look like this. But anyway, that ultimately the inspiration sort of comes from that. And if you see pictures from Carl's Bed Caverns, you can see that there's a lot of similarities drawn there. From that, yeah. So you start off going through these caverns, and really, once you enter the large, er the larger area where it's basically a uh, big soundstage, uh, where you have the the boat and the fort and everything, that's where uh, the real ride starts, where the actual like attraction begins. Um, so as far as designing the ride, like where who came up with the ideas? Where did all this stuff come from? Mm -hmm. Because like we said before, they abandoned the historical idea. They had to really come up with all of this, the look and the feel. And, and it seems ridiculous today because you think pirates and you immediately have a picture in your head. Right. Well, they invented that picture. Well, and there were, I mean, this isn't to say they, I mean, there were obviously, there were novels, there were books, there were things that talked about pirates in a romantic way. But in terms of that image that pops into your head when you think of a pirate, that really is Disney in this ride. I mean, yes, there were other, you know, things that talked about it that way, Treasure Island and other things like that. But this is what just cemented the yo-ho, yo-ho. And, it, you know, we'll get into it more, but that really is what yeah. cemented that in. Yeah, they, they definitely solidified the entire image into what you think of now when you think of a pirate or pirates in general. Uh, so the look and the feel of the ride. Uh, Disney legend Claude Coates, uh, who you might know as the background artist for uh, Snow White, Pinocchio, Dumbo, again, every original Disney film. Mm -hmm. Yeah, all um, the classics. In, in fact, if, if you're familiar with Pinocchio, it, like Geppetto's workshop, w in the background w with all of the intricate like wood carvings and uh, just all those little details that are in there. Uh, that was all him he yeah. that, he did all of that and it was that that was uh, a lot of people point to it being like his like masterpiece in terms of backgrounds because it's just there's so much detail and it doesn't well, the one thing he was good at was he would set the scene and he would set the mood and it would do nothing but add to the story it wouldn't take away from the actual uh the characters that yeah. were on you know the screen wasn't competing with the exactly yeah. exactly which is what you need in a background designer so he was good at his job is what yep. i'm trying to say um so claude was largely responsible for the atmosphere and the layout of the entire ride you know he had a mastery over like mood and lighting and space that you just couldn't even find anywhere else he, he was really really good at his job i can't overstate it so you might be wondering he was a background artist turned imagineer well the way this happened and I, I get the sense that this is kind of just how it happened a lot back then is if you're a really good animator, you're a really good artist, well, you'll be a good Imagineer. You'll just have to figure it out. Mm -hmm. uh, but the way it happened for him is the company that uh, Walt had hired to do uh, Mr. Toad's Wild Ride. I, I, is that what that's called? Yeah. I think it is. Um, they, the, he had hired them to do a lot of things for the park, but they were also working on the set design for Mr. Toad's Wild Ride. And they told him, you know, we're just, we're too pressed for we time. Can't. We can't do it. We can't finish it. And he said, okay, well, I got to do something. Which so that blows my mind now. Because if you think of now, like how competitive it is to get a job for Disney. I mean, we have some friends who work for Disney or who work, you know, in the Orlando area. And it's like, I mean, this is obviously not, it's Anaheim, but just still. To like think imagine of that, it's like, telling oh, the hey, Disney you want this company job? no. Right. Just like, <laughs> nah, I think we're, we're going to be a pass. And, or just being someone to be like, like oh, got too much to do guys sorry we can't we can't <laughs> we'll pull do it in people you. off the streets to finish this go ride. Fig figure it out i guess yeah. bye mm -hmm. yeah no that would never happen today but back then it did and uh as claude tells it walt walked into the studio and he and ken anderson were sitting there working on something and he just points at him and says you guys do it and walks out so the, and they well they knew better they knew not to be like well we can't so they were like well let's just figure this out yeah. and uh they did they, they, they had some help 
Right, but yeah. not no YouTube, no Google. I mean, they pretty much had to figure it out, which is pretty yeah. incredible. Yeah, yeah. So a lot, I'm sure a lot of the techniques and things that they designed and came up with were of their own. So uh, there was a lot of the ingenuity in there. And there's a lot of the ingenuity throughout the ride. Uh, so by the time he came to work on Pirates, though, he had been Imagineering for 12 years. So he had more than enough time under his belt. He knew what he was doing. Yeah. Uh, so that he's the really the largely the one who made the backgrounds everything uh, he's responsible for the mood mm -hmm. um when we get into the characters the main event the pirates themselves uh the people who sculpted and designed them uh were very important obviously they so all the all the sculptures and things were based on drawings the way they made the pirates themselves is they were based on Mark Davis's drawings. So he drew everything up and then tiny little statue sculptures were made um, of what they thought they would look like. And then larger uh, life-size sculptures were made from the tiny ones. Yeah, if you think of the process, I mean, it, it's remarkable. Yeah, so it starts with the drawing, then a tiny statue, then a big statue. Mm -hmm. um, I'm calling them statues. I'm sure there's an actual technical term for it, but I don't know what that is. So A mannequin? Sure. Yeah. Basically, mannequins. Yeah. <laughs> Pirate mannequins. Um, so uh, Disney legend, again, Blaine Gibson. He is the man who actually created the partner statue, the one in Disneyland with Walt and Mickey holding hands. Uh, he was leading the team um, who was sculpting the pirates. Now, I, I couldn't find a whole lot of information on the teams themselves because every time it says, like, so-and-so is responsible for this, I assume there had to be a team of people at least working with them mm -hmm. because they couldn't have done all of that work themselves. Yeah. And, and if, it, oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, if you guys have book suggestions, because both of us love to nerd out on this stuff and yeah. look these people up. Um, so if you have any suggestions, I mean, it doesn't have to be a book, but books, blogs, anything like that, let us know. We'll definitely check it out because yeah. we had a lot of fun looking up these different people. And Absolutely. And if there are more legitimate sources out there other than whatever random wikipedia Disney page but no we, we found reading. some good ones there was some, yeah, there was yeah, some yeah, good yeah, stuff yeah. out there and, but. yeah so it's it, there is a lot of good info out there but you know if, if there are some actual books that you have to recommend do that yeah let us know uh so anyway claude uh, or clock uh blaine gibson is uh, responsible for the design the ultimate uh final version of the pirate statues mannequins and uh, they brought to life the drawings of Mark Davis. Though originally they were a little too oh, like like, <laughs> because they were anatomically correct. Yeah. So and then this brings us to my favorite of this whole. We're looking up this whole team of people, and we're doing the research and we're talking about it. And uh, I'm ready for to talk about Disney legend again, but this time it's a lady. Okay, Alice Davis, and I loved reading about her so much because. She knew what she was doing and she's like, all right, boys, step aside. I've got some things to say. So she was the one responsible for the costume design. So she created all the costumes for the rides. And that was quite a task because she had to make them fit. Not only, you know, putting, you say mannequin or form, putting clothes, you know, if you've ever worked in retail, you know, putting clothes on the forms and mannequins. But she found it difficult, first of all because they <clears throat> had things that they didn't need to have on there because it was going to be covered by clothes anyway. So I just picture little Alice, you know, going and being like, knock it off, boys, like this, please, that's unnecessary. And um, so she, they quit doing that because it, it was there was no point. And then another challenge that she faced was having them fit. Um, there's one that's around a cannon where the pirate is actually laying over, holding a gun over a cannon. So she had to make the clothes, you know, it couldn't just be, you know, typical, like a mannequin or a form at the store, but it had to fit and have holes and spots for all of the different gear and the bolts and the screws. Yeah, because they're bolted to these things. So anytime yes. there's one like standing somewhere or like leaning against the wall, they're bolted to all this stuff. So it's not like making a normal shirt. You have to make a sh normal shirt. You have to make it look like a normal shirt. Yes. But then it has to fit around all of these different connecting points. Right. And it's it's just a, a lot more in, of an intricate process. Yeah. So the first thing she did is she said, listen, knock it off. You're making my job harder. Like, cut this out. So they, so they did. They listened to her. And then she thought, and I love this part, I think, I mean, just as a woman, but as a mom also especially, like, I think about if I'm going with, out with my kids. I have three young kids. We have three young kids. And... I take extra clothes for them if we're going to be out for all day or somewhere, you know, where they're going to get dirty. Or if I'm going to a presentation, a wedding, something like that, I pack a backup option. So she came to 
these men and she said, hey, you know, I would like to do two costumes for each pirate so that there's a backup pair. And they were like, no, no, like, you don't need to do that. You don't need to do that. And so she was like, okay. Um, and she did it anyway. So she she told them how much you know money she would need for fabric or how much money she would need for zippers and all the stuff. So she would just take whatever the total she needed was, say she needed $50, and she would double it. And I think that's so great. And then it came in handy because um, there was a fire. And I think I noted it down. It was a few months right after opening. Yeah, shortly after it opened. There yeah, was a small and fire. it damaged three of the pirates. And so, again, I picture all these guys who are like, oh, my gosh, what are we going to do? You know, we're going to have to shut down this ride. It's so popular right now. We're just getting the hype up. And, you know, how long is it going to take for you to fix this, Alice? And she's like, not very long at all. Ta-da! And she had her extra outfits. And now it's actually a requirement that any ride or attraction that has costumes on characters or rides there are at least two or three backups of it yeah so. yeah so it set the precedent for sure and yes. that has to that had to have been the greatest feeling ever. oh yeah for that a feisty little lady for I just them picture to, yeah to show up and be like oh we got a big problem here else the ride's gonna be closed for like a month how long is it gonna take we need these as fast as possible and then it'd be like it'd be like half an hour yeah i and almost wish that awesome. she hadn't been hadn't like revealed her secret of making <laughs> all of these extra pairs of clothes and it just been like oh yeah like 30 minutes i'll be right back and then just came back and blew their minds no, but what if they paid her like oh maybe yeah who knows um know. latasha said no recommendations but that's really interesting norris and i get nerdy about that stuff too yeah it's fun it's just i love i love that stuff i love all those little mm -hmm. fun facts but yeah so i'm a big fan of alice davis but that was too cool so moving on from the visual stuff, getting into something that maybe is a little more uh, not so much not appreciated, but maybe you just kind of don't think about it, uh, the music and the script of the ride. Now, the first thing about the music, uh, the song Yoho Pirate's Life for Me is it's so ingrained in the zeitgeist of our culture that a lot of people don't even know it's like they know the song they know they know the song they hear the song they know it's a pirate song but they don't even know that it's from the ride like they'll go on the ride and be like oh yeah they used that pirate song of course they did mm -hmm. not even knowing that no it was created for this ride this is where it came from mm -hmm. it's just one of those things that has just permeated through everything and everyone knows it like whether you've been on the ride or not mm -hmm. now the other thing about the song that is really important is that it, you know, you, you listen to it and it's this happy, cheery, fun, like, oh, we're just a bunch of fun pirates doing our pirate stuff. Right. And it's overlaid on top of what is objectively like, incredibly violent acts. Mm -hmm. And not, maybe not so much now. I mean, you could still make the argument that that stuff is there. But at the time of the original opening, you've got much pirates yeah. shooting guns at each other. you got a big battle going on. You've got pirates plundering towns, lighting things on fire. Chasing women. Chasing mm -hmm. women. Auctioning women. Mm -hmm. Just these scenes of intense violence. <laughs> and it's this fun, it's happy song the entire way. And it just, it, it changes how you perceive all of that. You know, it, yeah. Well, especially... you go from shielding your kid's eyes. I mean, if it was like ominous music and you're seeing these things to like, oh, hey, we're on a pirate cruise, which is really yeah. interesting. Yeah, exactly. You, 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 if it was anything else, if it was anything a little more ominous or just like, I mean, even some of the music from the movie, if it was like that to like set the mood differently, you would have a completely different experience and it would not be as fun. So it, it's really important to have that there. Uh, as far as its creation, um, Exitensio, who, uh, his full name, if you don't know who that is, another famous Disney legend, mm -hmm. uh, Xavier, or was it Francis? Let's just say Xavier, Xavier Atencio. I can't remember his first name. Uh, and George Bruns, uh, co-wrote it together. Mm -hmm. the, the, the song, uh, Yoho Pirate's Life for Me. George Bruns was the Disney musical director at the time. Exitensio was an animator who had never written a song in his life. So he, I'm sure, relied heavily on George Bruns as far as direction, but he, uh, Exitensio is heavily credited with creating the entire song. Um, so I, I don't know exactly how much of it created percentage-wise, uh, but really he gets all the credit. So, you know, good for him for, mm -hmm. well, for his first time Well, a song that everyone ever. knows. It's pretty cool. Exactly, and, and to make something that is just so uh, prevalent. So as, as far as the script, uh, that was also Exitensio, and the way he got the job, uh, as I heard it, well, from an interview with him, is that he pitched an idea to Walt, like, oh, hey, I think we should have this at this line, or, or we have this line at this area. 
And Walt said, oh, yeah, sure, sounds good. Keep going. And just had him do the whole thing. <laughs> so uh, as far as the voices that you hear in the ride, and I don't know what they've been changed to now because there have been a lot of updates. We'll get to that later. Mm-hmm. And uh, what was happening is he was trying to write things that he would think pirates would say. Uh, so what we end up getting is, again, just the amalgamation of all of this pirate lore and things that you had you know heard here and there compressed into what we now think of as pirates yeah so any anytime you think of like you know yo ho our matey blah, 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 any of that pirate talk chances are it came from him mm-hmm. and, and he's the one who put it all together and, and made it into what it is now um, oh Gigi said oh no did i miss it Gigi, i hope i hope you can still see us hi Gigi. Gigi, one of my good friends. Remember Gigi? Yeah. 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 Hi. As far as our, our uh, clock says, it's still going. So yeah. hopefully it's hopefully still, it's still going. Um, so anyway, uh, as far as the storyboard uh, work, Exitensio, he had done some storyboard work on you know uh, animated films and whatnot. But again, never written an actual script before. So that was his first foray into that as well. So uh, really throwing a first time around something that became so iconic is just one of those incredible things where it's like you couldn't have you if, if you, you had tried that. Yeah, yeah you wouldn't have been able to do that um oh good she says she can so hi hello okay. hi <laughs> um so moving into the opening of the ride yes which took five years so new orleans square officially opened july 24th 66 so it's already been five years in the making there were some pauses you know that we mentioned earlier but Five years from concept to opening. So it was a long time in the making. Yes. Um, and they were working on it steadily. You know, there weren't a whole lot of, you know, mishaps or problems or anything. It was just, you know, they were doing a job. Mm-hmm. Um, but then December 15th, 1966, Walt Disney passed away suddenly. Yeah. Now, the majority of the ride was complete at this point. They had their direction. They knew how to finish it. They just had to do the work. So it didn't really halt progress or progress on the ride or really you know, make any big hiccups or anything because so much was already done. I mean, other than the surprise of like, oh gosh, you know, Walt's gone. Mm-hmm. Um, but as far as that, they, they knew what to do. They knew how to finish it. So it really stayed on track for the remainder of the time they were working on it. And there was a lot of Walt in the ride. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It's like I said, it, all the major decisions, the final word had already been said on pretty much everything. Yeah. And Walt was the final word. So uh, he did see test runs of the ride. It, nothing was completed. But the one thing that was completed was the auctioneer animatronic. Mm-hmm. That one at the very end. Well, not the very end. But um, the one who was at the time auctioning off women. He got to see that portion of the ride in its entirety with the costume and the voice and everything. He's seeing it work. And at the time, that was the most advanced audio animatronic figure ever. Mm-hmm. So it, it was the pinnacle of what they were able to do at the time. And he got to see it completed. So, yeah. you know, that, that's pretty cool, at least. You know, at least you got to see the, the, the mountain peak of what they were working on. Um, so then Pirates officially opens April 19th, 1967. Mm-hmm. Now... I thought this was really cool. They made made like a huge deal out of the entire opening of it. Mm-hmm. So what they did is they had the uh, the a bunch of like media types and reporters uh, were on the sailing ship Columbia, uh, which is that big like 18th century looking pirate ship thing that you can you know uh, charter uh, cruises on or ride on and like just kind of see the parks from ship side. Um, so they had a bunch of reporters and whatnot on that, kind of cruising around. And then they had a bunch of people dressed as pirates storm the ship in rowboats and like climb up the side and basically just capture the entire ship. Yeah. And like capture like people on board. Uh, and then they sailed the ship to the port or wherever it could park where they could get boats park. It was well, yeah, because and you can actually see there is dock? video of it. I yeah, guess they docked. Yeah. They dock. yeah, there's a video of it you can see. But it's pretty cool. Like as someone who works in marketing i was like that's a really cool publicity move so it was pretty neat especially for the time you know yeah. now these things happen all the time and you know but for 1967 pretty yeah, yeah. big pretty it, big deal pretty cool and, and the whole thing's on film it's part of a uh, wonderful world of disney uh sh- half hour thing that you can see and you can pull up on youtube yeah but oh, uh there's two more jamie hi hey, and then Gigi said i've only been to disneyland uh, but Pirates is one of my favorite rides and favorite non-princess Disney movies. So it's cool. 
Boat stock. Uh, boat stock. Good. 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 Okay. <laughs> yeah. I, I know my terminology. Uh, so anyway, they they dock the boat. They exit at the where the entrance of the ride is. Which if, if you've ever been to it at Disneyland, it's just kind of like in the middle of the street, almost like a storefront. Mm -hmm. And uh, they fight some guards. There's a band there. They defeat the guards and they use a battering ram to bust the door open. And voila, Pirates of the Caribbean is open to the public. Yeah. Um, and it was an instant success. People loved it. It, it was. They were blown away by everything about it, and all the hard work paid off, and it was it was an instant success. Yes. Mm -hmm. And then fast forward to Walt Disney World, which opened four years later. So this takes us to 1971. Walt Disney World opens without a pirate's ride, which I was really surprised because you think of mm -hmm. Walt Disney World, you think of the classic rides, and you think, of course, of Dumbo and Peter Pan. But you think of pirates. So I didn't know that until we started digging deep into this research. Yeah, I didn't know either. that. Um, so, yeah, it opened without a Pirates of the Caribbean ride. And that was largely because they thought that there were so many similar pirate things in Florida, central Florida, that people wouldn't want it. They just they wouldn't be interested in it. They already had had enough pirate stuff and they did not want it. And there was also the fact that there were still actual pirates uh, <laughs> operating in the Florida and Caribbean <laughs> areas. So the, uh, again, they were like, well, they have real pirates here. Why are they going to want to come see our fake pirates? So they decided we're not going to do the pirates right here. It's, yeah. not, a, it's not a good move. Yeah. Um, so obviously that changed because there's a pirates ride there now. Yes. And it was brought about because of popular demand. Now, what was originally supposed to go in the spot where Pirates of the Caribbean is now was a ride called the Western River Expedition. And this was another dark ride, uh, and it was going to be a dark, you know, boat-themed ride that was going to be this Old West-themed um, trip through, I mean, s sort of what Pirates was, uh, not historically accurate, but kind of a caricature of the idea of that. Um, Mark Davis did all the designs for it again. He, he had the whole thing mapped out how it was going to look uh, before they decide to nix the idea. And uh, you can find all the original drawings online. Um, I'm not quite sure where, but I know I've seen a lot of them. Uh, one of my favorites, actually. Google. Dive really <laughs> yeah, deep exactly. into Google. You will find them. That's Western River Expedition. Mm -hmm. um, one of my favorites is there was going to be a part where there were these bandits who were robbing like a boat or stagecoach or something. They were robbing something. And, you know, the bandits, they have their, their bandanas on, like, tied around their faces. Yeah. And they're on horses who also have bandanas <laughs> tied around their so faces. Funny. And I don't know why that's the funniest thing I've ever seen, but it is. It's just super cheesy. And like, I, it's just, it's, I love it, though. I'm sad that we didn't get that because I want to see it. I want it may, If they could put it, like, in a movie or something, like, especially after, like, Tangled, where you have, like, the horse as an actual character. Mm -hmm. If you could have a movie where that happened, and if there is one that has that, let us know because I want to watch it. Mm -hmm. um, but anyway, they 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 had the space available for that, but they decided, okay, well, everyone wants the pirates ride, so just get for, you know, scratch that idea. We're putting pirates here, and they did. Um, there are some differences. It's not a carbon copy, so if you've ever read both, you know this. But if not, um, there are some major differences. The queue itself is uh, larger. Like when you first enter, mm -hmm. uh, they had more space to work with there. And it's it doesn't have the long uh, grotto cave thing that you go through in the Disneyland one, uh, mostly because they didn't have a basement. They had yeah, they didn't have through. to get around that basement issue. Right. So they said, well, we're not going to ha just have that here. And the the area was set up differently also. So they, there's no basement that you have to go through. So there is like a beach with some skeletons. You mm -hmm. get a few of the elements, but not all of it. And again, and, we've only re we've watched many, right. <laughs> many, many, many. Point of view. Yeah, a lot of POV videos yeah. of riding through that. But we have both only been on the one at Disney World. Yeah, in Orlando, yeah only on so. that one. So the personal experience only from there. Um, but I've seen lots of videos, so yes. I feel like yeah, I know him both. so more than me. Yeah, but we've both seen quite a bit. Um, and all the Walt Disney World one is also much shorter. Um, well, not much, but several minutes shorter than the Disneyland ride. Mm -hmm. uh, mostly it's not a ride. I mean, that's a big deal. Right, and mostly because it doesn't have the, the long cave sequence. Uh, so despite the differences though, huge hit, everyone loves it. And I mean, this is the reason why you get a pirate's ride in every park that opens for Disney. So like when Tokyo Disneyland opened in 83, had a pirate's ride, mm -hmm. Disneyland Paris or Euro Disney at the time had one in 92 and Shanghai Disney had one in 2016, which 
if you've ever, the the Shanghai Disney one, it's not when, the same. Well, yeah, I'm just shaking my head because it's it's the one that's done completely to the movie instead of with nods to the movie. Right? I mean, yeah, yeah, it's, it, like it's screens. And... It's a ride based on the movie, not a ride based on the ride. If that makes sense, uh, with elements of the movie peppered in. Uh, so it's it's got a lot of like large screens. It looks maybe if you're there, it's different because I've only seen the video. So and maybe if you're actually riding it, it's a little bit different because it does look impressive in the sense that like there's these giant screens and you're seeing these big cinematic things and they build this whole world. But I just feel like it doesn't have the same I don't know magic mm -hmm. yeah, <laughs> that the original no, one absolutely. has. And, like I watched it a couple times and I was like, I don't know what it is about this. I should be more impressed. I'm just not. So uh, I don't know. It, it just it, it's lacking something. So I'm not a fan of that one, but it exists, and because it's so popular, it, it exists. Uh, so, so when talking about Pirates of the Caribbean, you can't talk about the history without talking about the many, 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 many changes and updates that have happened mm -hmm. to this ride. I don't know. I, I don't have any sort of numbers here, like, yeah. but it has to hold a record for the largest number of changes to occur to yes. one and single these ride. aren't small i mean most rides in the disney parks have had refurbishments or if they mm -hmm. haven't they will have refurbishments and you know little updates and things like cleanings and just to get up but the we're talking and we have the big ones at least noted we're talking big changes like not just a little freshen up you know situation we're talking about like some big yeah, changes not like oh changes. we've got a new technology let's refurb this animatronic like major changes mm -hmm. were made to this ride uh, the first one, uh, not a, a huge one, really, but in 1987, the ride had become so popular in Disneyland that the queue was starting to spill out into the street. And so, this is 20 years after it opened. Yeah. So, so it, it's and still super popular. Mm -hmm. The line was backing up out into the street. And it was, it was clogging the whole area so people couldn't get through because there were so many people waiting in line for pirates. So they made some refurbishments. They, they updated the queue a little bit to make it run a little smoother maybe fit a few more people and they added a bridge outside so it gives people a way to bypass that line get over it and move beyond it so you can keep checking out the rest of new orleans square so mm -hmm. um that was a, a positive update uh that's you know really helped things out there uh 10 years later in 97 this is where we get our first big controversial change mm -hmm. so after years of complaints i i can't even imagine how many i mean we're talking I mean, how, 50 years, 40 years? 40 years. I'm trying to do math mm -hmm. in my head. 40 years. So after 40 years of being open, it, it, it must have been just constant at this point. People complaining about the themes of the ride, what was going on inside of it. Mm -hmm. So at this point, they think, okay, well, we have to do something. We have to update it or we're going to lose, you know, pe people aren't going to want to yes. ride anymore. Yeah. So There's major changes things. take place. Yes. Yeah. First of all, you've got the pirates who are chasing women. Um, that changed completely. Some were taken out. Um, they were also switched up so that it was women chasing pirates. <laughs> and instead of the pirates chasing women to do God knows what with them, uh, it was women chasing pirates who had stolen treasure and food yeah. and other things. So it was it was them, like, they, they were still pillaging, but it was less suggestive. Mm -hmm. um, the other change came with the pooped pirate, <laughs> who at the time mm -hmm. was the pirate. He was sitting, like, on the bottom of the steps near the water, and he had like a mustache and a big hat. And he was, uh, you, you would know him because he was holding a pair of women's underwear or negligee. <laughs> and uh, he was talking about how exhausted he was from chasing this woman around who was in a barrel next to him. And she would pop up and down. And I think you were supposed to assume she was naked, naked. because he was holding her yeah. underwear. Mm -hmm. So that was changed um, to be become the gluttonous pirate. So instead of underwear, they gave him a chicken leg. And <laughs> I like that much better. Instead of a woman next to him, they put, a, it was a cat or a dog in the barrel that was popping up and down. They put a bunch of animals around him. Now, part of this was because um, a ride, oh, I can't remember the name of the ride, but another attraction had closed down. And rather than, because animatronics are expensive, rather than just get rid of them or you know, hold on to them somewhere they were like well, let's repurpose them yeah so the timing was perfect because a lot of the animals that were in that attraction they moved around him and they used him in there yeah the parks still do that today too they'll oh, change yeah. around things and you can see where one ride or attraction changes to another you can see these similarities because it saves them mega 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 money mm -hmm. 
money mm -hmm. yeah. and time. <laughs> They're thrifty, those Imagineers. Mm -hmm. uh, so that was updated. Um, and then uh, another update came in. I'm, I'm sure there were other changes at the time, but those were the major ones, the big ones that people remember. Um, but the pooped pirate, the gluttonous pirate, he was changed again in 2006 when the ride was updated to add characters from the movies. Because the first, now the first pirates came out in 2003, like we said at the start of the show. And by that point, people were going on the rides for the first time who had seen the movies, never ridden the ride before, yes. and were like, Where's Jack Sparrow? And this I'm is confused. Yeah, because the name is the same. So this is very. It is confusing because mm -hmm. if you've seen the movies, or especially kids now who are growing up with the movies, and then they go, and if they were to see no reference, then they're, they're like, well, what is this? These are just these random pirates. Yeah. So it had to, they had to do something. Exactly. And what they did, I think, I like what they did. They, they, cause they added in, um, well, first that you've got Barbosa on the ship, but when you first enter where the, there's the ship and the fort and everyone's fighting, Barbosa is on that ship. He replaced the captain who was originally there. Uh, you have, uh, like I said, the, the gluttonous pirate, the Chicken drunk man. pirate, yeah. the poop pirate. He is now, I don't even know what his name is now. The map holding pirate or key holding pirate. He's got like a map and a key that he holds on to, and he's talking about how he's he's he'd like to see Jack Sparrow. Yeah, get this leads from you him. into the. Yeah, because he's got this stuff to his treasure, and in the barrel next to him, it's Jack Sparrow now popping up and looking around. Um, in, let's see. Also in 2006, they this is a love hate ad thing for me because they added this cool fog effect, and I, I love the way it looks. It's as you're entering into the ride, there's like a fog machine that creates this like waterfall of fog and they project onto it Davy Jones and then later on Blackbeard and they're doing the whole, you know, you know, beware all you who enter. I don't know exactly what to say, but that sort of thing. But with this, they also removed the original talking skull at the beginning of the ride that you said, <sighs> yeah. yeah, the, you know, come, you know, searching for uh, adventure and salty old pirates and blah, blah, blah. So they got rid of that. That's all gone now. So they, they, they put the skull back. The fog thing is gone. But it was a cool effect. I like how it looked. Mm -hmm. um, I thought it was kind of neat. Um, what else did they add? Oh, the Mer treasure room. Oh, oh the, yeah, yeah, yeah. So the that. treasure room at the end of the ride was a completely new addition. Mm -hmm. There's a really cool uh, Jack Sparrow animatronic in there. He's surrounded by treasure. Um, he's get stolen the town's treasure and he you know comes away the victor so it gives it the nice story too like it really gets a story yeah, element yeah. feel when you're yeah because they, they basically they took the ride and they layered the pirates movie story and theme over top of it um i don't think it's gratuitous though i don't think they they didn't redo so much that you're like oh now it's just the movie ride it doesn't yeah it doesn't feel like it's being shoved down your throat mm -hmm. but it's the movie yeah yeah i like what they did uh, so 2012, uh, they did add uh, some mermaid things. Uh, if you remember, we had um, On Stranger Tides then, and there were mermaids in that movie. So they added um, another cool like projection thing. When you're entering the ride initially, going through the grotto, there were mermaids. It must have been projection from above. I don't know how the effect worked, but um, you could see like mermaids, like light coming up. And they were like swimming next to you. And then there was a mermaid skeleton among the skeletons on the beach and stuff with the other pirate skeletons. Now, all of these were just removed completely. The the projections of uh, Blackbeard on the fog, the mermaid stuff, all gone. My theory, because there's no... Yes, put a little asterisk here, people, because most of this has been heavily researched. Here comes Stefan Theory, but, but uh, go ahead. Okay, so there's no there's no official word on why they took it out. Like, especially the skeleton, because it looked cool. My theory is that Disney wants you to forget that that movie ever existed, uh, not just because it did poorly at the box office, uh, but because it doesn't really fit with the rest of the movies, and that includes the fifth one. So they just kind of want you to forget that it was there and maybe just not remember that it yeah, happened. Personally, I, I love, of course, I love the first one. Mm -hmm. I like the second one. And I love the most recent one. But the other ones are kind of like, I mean, they start to bleed together. And especially that one, it's the one that I'm like, well, wait, which one was that? Or what did that scene come from? Yeah, the third one was muddy. The, the fourth one was like, it's okay. Like, I just watched it recently and it's like, it's okay. It's not bad, mm -hmm. but... Fifth ties to the fourth a little bit, though. It does, yeah. That's the thing. So I... Plus, here, here's the crux of my theory. Okay, yes. Um, in, in, in an interview that Orlando Bloom did uh, for the fifth one, the fifth movie that was coming out, he said that it was going to be sort of a soft reboot of the fourth one, sort of like overshadowed that and, and suggested that you weren't supposed to 
include the fourth one in the canon. Um, so that makes me think that that was the overall mindset, and that's why they removed those elements from the ride completely because they don't want you to know that that is a well, ride. and it, it's working. Like it's working for me. Like what I said, I barely remember mm -hmm. that. So I'm like, yeah, I'll yeah go I totally with it. forgot what it was until right? I realized that I had it on my uh, right. Apple Movie account, and I was like, oh, I guess I'll watch this. Mm -hmm. um, so anyway, mermaids were there, now they're gone. Uh, and now, and most recently in 2018, uh, the auction scene was changed once again. No longer are women being auctioned away as property. Now they're auctioning off goods that they've stolen from the town. And as you may remember, the original auction scene had this redheaded woman who was like the, the bell of the ball type figure <laughs> who was like going to fetch the highest price. Um, she has been updated to the red pirate. So now she is assisting and auctioning off things with the auctioneer to yes. people. I think she shouts something about rum also, and then everyone else says, like, we want rum. It kind of brings the women to be equal to the pirates. It, yeah, it, it's actually yeah. kind of powerful what a small little change like that can do, because it brings them, instead of being something that the pirates are chasing around, like an object, to being equal, yeah. like playing with, you know, the pirates. So, you, yeah, so we have lady pirates, and the auction is now an auction of goods and not people. Yeah. Which I think just on a whole is probably a good <laughs> yes, um, yeah yeah that's just yeah, I'm, I'm glad they made that move Me too. now i'm sure changes in the future will come um people obviously always have issues with the changes and the updates especially such a popular ride yeah yeah you know they're like oh and, and i'm sure i don't know if old people say this but i'm sure you get that oh you're destroying my childhood nonsense whatever um but you know people get upset about this thing not so much because they're like you're changing a ride but it's more of like what the changes represent to them which is like oh that's not acceptable anymore and now i have to update my feelings and how i act and how dare you ask me to do that yeah well and i think the sensitivities thing will come up but this is not i mean i think that's it's, it's not a historic it was always meant to be a fun ride right. this isn't a historically accurate situation yeah never from the beginning it was just supposed to be a fun ride yeah and if they have to continue updating it to be a fun ride for people then that's you know then do it right. make it keep making it fun yeah i don't want to take our daughter on it and be like shocked i want it to be a fun yeah hey, this is pirates yeah exactly now that it's like oh we don't want to answer those questions it's like no it's just a fun ride mm -hmm. like yeah we understand that that stuff happened it's just a fun ride. Let's let's keep making it fun and keep it fun. Yeah. Um, and that's what they do. And that's what it is. It's still fun because they keep doing this. And that's why we're talking about it now. And it hasn't closed down because they keep updating it and making it fun. Um, all right. I think we are into our fun fact lightning round. <laughs> so th these are just a bunch of random facts that we couldn't really fit in anywhere else, but wanted to mention because they're fun. So the fun fact. Fun fact. Lightning round. you did there. <laughs> Lightning. <laughs> uh, okay, so uh, first of all, um, I mentioned at the very, very beginning that the movies were, it was a surprisingly popular franchise. Uh, I don't think it, people really realize what a risk it was to make the movies in the first place. Now, we're not going to go in-depth on these, obviously, because that's its own thing. We're talking about the ride. But to make, first of all, to make a movie based on a ride doesn't always work. Haunted Mansion. Awesome ride. Everyone loves it. I've never seen the movie, and I don't know of anyone who has. It just... I think I'm pretty sure I did. Like, I'm pretty sure. I, but but I what memory I do I have of it? Do I have... No. Yeah. No. Pirates of the Caribbean, doubly dangerous. Because before Pirates of the Caribbean, the last pirate movie to be made was Cutthroat Island, and that movie was a... I'm pretty sure one of the largest bombs in Hollywood history. So much so that they completely stopped making Pirates movie until Pirates of the Caribbean. So how they decided to get people behind this, I don't know. I'm sure there's a story there. I didn't look it up. But just knowing that brief history, huge risk. Because as far as Hollywood was concerned, people did not want to see pirate movies. And they didn't want to see anything having to do with pirates. And to make a movie that was, the premise is... It's based on a ride we have that people seem to enjoy. Seems like a giant risk. Mm -hmm. So I'm I'm glad they did because, like I said, I loved it. I still love it. They blew uh, it out of the water. Hey, hey. pirate jokes. <laughs> so it, it was just it was a giant risk and it paid off. And I'm glad it did because I enjoy it still. Um, the Blue Bayou Restaurant. We didn't mention that at all, but in the uh, Disneyland ride. 
uh, when you first enter, there is Which the... Gigi, if she's still watching, oh, maybe yeah. you know. Oh, and she said, I've seen the Haunted Mansion wasn't bad. Oh, Whoa. okay. Well, you know what? Maybe because we love, again, mm -hmm. we love watching Santa movies. So maybe we we'll watch it. it but yeah, maybe you can let us know if you know the Blue Bayou restaurant. But go ahead. Um, let's see. So Blue Bayou restaurant, it's inside the ride. So you can eat inside the ride, which was the first time you could do that. And interesting thing I learned about the restaurant is it was Disney's first, like, forte first step into the fine dining experience um and really the reason they made the restaurant was because before that um <laughs> you're always so funny <laughs> uh before that they may they they had been criticized for their food it was like oh it's park food it's hot dogs and pretzels and which yeah. now we call quick service yeah. counter service but yeah so but you know they were getting criticized for it so they're like well we got up the ante here and give people a fine dining experience which they did mm -hmm. in the blue by restaurant i've never eaten there i hear it's good no um theories on what the original story ride was or story story of the ride was mm -hmm. so now we obviously have the the pirates of the caribbean movie overlay with jack sparrow you know stealing the town's gold and whatnot so it's very obvious what the story is back then when it first opened it wasn't so obvious uh some theories include uh that you're passing through the last moments of a dead pirate's life so you're entering like you, you see the skeletons the pirate's dead but then you're seeing like the flashes of the last moments of his life which uh, makes some sense i i could i could see this that. is of the theories that we're gonna get read over this is one of my favorites yeah um another one similar to that one is that you're seeing a pirate's life in reverse which doesn't make sense because you see the skeletons and then you see the fighting which i guess that part is like okay sure but then you see like the town then the town's on fire and then it, it, that just doesn't really make a lot of sense narrative the narrative doesn't work um, then there is the other uh, theory that it's just a random collection of fun pirate stuff, um, which after reading the history and seeing how everything kind of came about by accident, what with the grotto and everything, I buy into that. They're like, just put in what works, what's cool, and the story is will just kind of develop on its own. So Yeah, and that's, I don't need it to be more. Like to me, I mean, it is cool they have the stuff from the movies now, but to me, it's it's fun pirate stuff and i don't need it to really necessarily be sequential at all i just like the fun pirate stuff right and we do have a story now so enjoy that mm -hmm. um one last thing because we're we actually have to get out of here pretty quick um in april 26 2017 johnny depp actually showed up inside the ride dressed as our daughter's birthday jack sparrow oh yeah i didn't even realize that <laughs> Haley's birthday yeah uh dressed as jack sparrow um, and then he was just like harassing people on the ride, just like <laughs> shouting at them. There are many videos of this. Yeah, many, and, many. And, and doing his uh, his Sorry, Jack guys. Sparrow thing. Um, so yeah, go on YouTube. There's tons of videos of a bunch of like montages people have put together. Um, my favorite ones are the ones where people are like filming like a POV of the ride. They don't know he's going to be there and they're just like filming it. And then as they get close, they're like, "What? what's going on? What is this? And then they realize what's happening and they lose their minds. Mm -hmm. And it's so funny mm -hmm. because they just start freaking out because they're like, I don't know what to do. The ride's going, Johnny Depp's right there and now he's gone. I gotta, and I'm surprised no one jumped out of the boat. Yeah. Um, so yeah, check those out because those are amazing. Um, but yeah, to this day, the ride, it's, it's still, it's as historic as it ever was. Anytime they make an update. Whoa, one last quick thing. When they took out all the mermaid stuff, one cool thing they did put in is there's a pirate in a booby trap and there's like an octopus reaching up to his leg and it's, it's made, even though it's new, it's made in the style of like the original pirates. So the original models and the original animatronics. The cool thing is that when you're going by him, it's a skull. But then as you pass by, the skull, the face and everything, the skeleton turns into a real man. Mm -hmm. So like from the movie. Awesome. And it's all practical effects, just like the original effects were in the movie. Yeah, in, where they could have done something much fancier. They just used very mm -hmm. simple but really cool yeah. so they kept the aesthetic so and that and that's one thing i wanted to really get across is that this ride has those things that it's like the same reason that people like listen to vinyl like it's not the most perfect incarnation technically of that thing but it's the best version you know because people like the pops and the cracks and they like the imperfections and they like the the way it feels when you experience yeah. it and that's what's great Cult about classic, this ride. cult favorite yeah exactly it's what makes all that stuff great yeah oh Gigi said i've seen it while on the ride in disneyland but no idea how to get there next time i'm in cali i'm going to check it out oh for the restaurant i was able to go on the little mermaid grotto awesome. oh yeah oh she oh she's requesting deep dive into the little mermaid 
Yeah. Oh, they're, oh yeah, yeah. That would be a fun one. All right. Well, um, that is it for Pirates of the Caribbean. Yeah. So we want to thank theliveplace.com and Dean from theliveplace.com for streaming this for us. We are so excited. They have its amazing streamers on there. Lots of family friendly Disney content. So definitely, definitely check that out. I will have it linked up in the description box on my channel as well. So yes. thank you so much to Dean. And we want to thank you guys for watching and participating. And you can tune in. We will be doing this weekly now. So yeah. it's pretty exciting. Every Wednesday at uh, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Yes, which is 8 Central. And uh, speaking of participating, if there is a ride or an attraction uh, in the parks that you would like to see us do a deep dive on, uh, then hit us up on Instagram. Yes, I am Leah Tackles, which I will have linked again. And I'm at Small World Shirts Co. Which, again, we'll link it up. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching, and we hope you have a magical one. Bye, yeah. guys. See you real soon. Bye.